probably a story that you've never heard or something like that. Just, I always have a knack of just really digging deep into these things and finding the thing that nobody has ever read before. So we'll talk to you about this guy called the prodigal son, all right? Anybody ever heard of the prodigal son? Wow. I, here I thought I was the only one that ever studied that. My goodness. Prodigal son, what a wonderful story, right? wonderful story, a story that has been, uh, that Jesus tells us here, but it's a story that's relived over and over and over again. It's a, it's, it's a story that is given to us, but that Jesus shares with us. But this was not, I find that this is some, a very common story, very common story. And so, if I could, I'd like to read to you some of these verses. And, and uh, I know it's, it's a number of verses here, but if I can, I'll read to you quickly and, and uh, a number of these verses, and then we'll go on and speak to you for a little bit, all right? Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. 15, 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and it began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Amen. What a wonderful story about that son that has a chance to come back home. Amen. To return, if you would, and to be in his, come back and find, the really get to know the love of a father. Really get to know the love of fathers. First of all, I want you to notice the desires which mastered this young man. There was desires that was within his heart that for that far country. He had a, he had a desire to taste of that, that far country. You know, many young people have dreams of, of getting out away from home. How many of you had those dreams, right? Many young people have dreams and have great desire to get out and get away from mom and dad and get out on their own and... Some of, them are, some of them think that Bible school is where that happens, right, Brother Johnson? Hey, man, you pray for Michaela. She has her first weekend in Bible school this weekend, and she's probably, you know, they think it's, oh, this is going to be great. I get away from mom and dad and get free, move out on my own, be my own boss for a change. I'm going to be my own boss. How does that work out, right? Then you end up getting married and so much for being your own boss anymore, right? There it goes that. Oh, man. You know, but, I mean, that's that's this thing in in people's lives. Get out on my own. I want to be on my own. I want to have that desire inside of them, thinking that, oh, that's going to be so great, so wonderful. And then they get out there on their own and they find out, you know what? The food's bad. Nobody can cook like mom can, right? They get out there, and then they have to start paying their bills and 
And man, it takes money to live, and, and it takes money to exist like this. And now I, oh, I've got to work again. I've got to go to work every day. Every day? I have to work all day? You're kidding. Oh, man, I wish I was back in school. Say amen, Jonathan. Hey man, oh boy, I'll tell you, once you get out on your own, suddenly that, that dream, bubble dream that you have has popped and you come into reality. Suddenly when you get out there, you realize, you know, this isn't all that I thought it was going to be. And it's amazing. It don't take very long for reality to begin to sink in. It don't take very, thank you, Nathan. Amen. Hey, man, you've been out of way a little while, but hey, man, I know you still like to come home. Man, you miss mom's cooking. Man. But the, he had those desires that just got a hold of him. I want to be out there. I want to get on my own. I want to try the far country. I want to do this on my own. And then after a short time, he finds out that's really not all that he thought it was going to be. I'll tell you, there's people, they look out at a life of sin, and they look at all the pleasures of the world, and they think, that's what I want to do. That's how I want to live. That's what I want. And they have such great desire, and it just consumes them. That desire for pleasure, that desire for the things of the world, and it really don't take very long before that bubble is popped, and they realize, man, I missed it. I have missed it. Amen. 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 Notice the disasters which waited for this man. The disaster that was waiting for this young man because when he finally got what he had hoped for for so long, when he finally achieved what he wanted to be out on his own, to get out and enjoy all the pleasures of life, he got out there and he found it was a disaster for him. When everything that he was given was spent and wasted, he was down to nothing. Nothing. He had wasted it all. Hey man, there's some key words in that, that, that verse right there. And he, when, he, when he gets down to nothing, nothing, and it was wasted, what does it profit a man? What does it, where is the profit? In living this land, living for pleasure and living for the world. Amen. He had wasted it all. It was gone. And there was nothing to show for it. Nothing to show for it. It was wasted. His life became a disaster. He was at the very bottom. He was feeding the swine. And I'm sure there could not have been a worse job for a young man at that time. Amen. To have to feed the swine. Let me tell you, he is, his life was a real disaster. I look at people and they get out in sin and let me tell you, their life becomes a disaster. That's right. They have so much promise. So much hope. They have so much potential. They have so much that has been invested in them by loving parents, by a good church family, people that care for them, people that have mentored them and been leaders to their life, and yet they throw it all away and they walk away from it all and they waste all their potential, they waste all of their talent, they waste all of their abilities. All that they could have had is wasted, and their life becomes a disaster. A disaster. Yes, Having to pick up pieces of a life. Yes. When they get to the very, very bottom. And that's where this young man was at. He found that his life was a disaster. Yes. Nothing worked out like he thought it would. Nothing had panned out like he had hoped it would. Can I tell you today, do you find your life in a disaster? Do you feel like that your life is a waste? That you've thrown it all away? That all the good things that God gave you now just seems to be falling through your fingers? And it's gone? 
Amen. And you think, what about tomorrow? What about the future? Is this wall that I have to look forward to? Let me tell you, there's many people whose lives become a disaster. Sad. It's so sad to see a life that has been destroyed by sin. Sin, a life just thrown away. When they get on the very bottom. This young man, when he got to the very bottom, man, when he got down that low, hey man, there were some discoveries that he made in his life. I want you to look at the, what he discovered about his life. First of all, the thing that he discovered was the folly of sin. The folly of sin. Oh, it looks so good, but it is nothing. It amounts to nothing. Oh, it looked to be so much fun, but now it's gone. It looked to be something that was so great, but now it's all gone. And now you have nothing left. Nothing to hold to. Nothing to count on. Nothing that you can depend on. It seems like it's just down to nothing. That is what sin always turns out to be. Is a frivolous and folly and to nothing. It's a waste. To live for sin. So many people, they've wasted their life. Wasted their life. There's people that have so much to offer, and they realize when it's too late, they discover the folly of their sin. Too late. It's gone. It's all taken from them. Is that where you find yourself today? Looking at your life and saying, you know, all that, I've in, all that I've had, all that came to me has been wasted. I'm down to nothing. Something else that this boy discovered when he got down into that hog pen, when he got down to where his life was a disaster and he started making some new discoveries in his life. Isn't it funny how, you know, uh, kids learn so quickly after they get out away from home? How good they had it. Isn't that funny? You know, I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand it. But I don't know. Maybe, I don't think I ever was like that. But there, these kids, they think I want to move out on my own. I want to move into my own apartment. I want to move into my own place. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you're making. You know, making seven dollars an hour. You know, you can live at home where mom and dad provide food for you. They buy your clothes. They put a roof over your head, right? They take care of you, but yet on your $7 an hour, all right, on your $7 an hour, you're ready to move out and take on to yourself all of your insurance, all of your housing, all of your food, and suddenly it's like, you know, it really wasn't that bad back home. It really wasn't that bad. When people get out, they, they think sin looks so wonderful. Yeah, they do. It's so great. And then they get out there, and suddenly they realize the folly of their sin. Yeah. Oh, it really wasn't all that bad when I was living for God. It wasn't really all that bad before. Hey, I went out into sin. Now they realize the folly of their sin. What discoveries are made. Man, you know what? They discovered the Father. You say, well, what do you mean? They discovered the Father. They knew their father. They had lived with their father. They had been brought up by their father. No, they really did not know the father. They may have been in it. They may have coexisted together. But they did not know their father. Know their father. Oh, it's funny because sometimes young people think that father, he is this, such a bad person. He is so mean. He makes me pay my own car insurance. He is so mean to me. Oh, he makes me do chores around the house. Yeah, he won't let me stay out all night. He won't let And they, they've, they've, what they know of their father is this mean, authoritarian figure that is in their life that is very demanding of them. But they really don't know their father. And this man really did not know his father until his life became a disaster. 
And then he made a discovery about who his father and what his father really was all about. That's when he really got to know his father. And let me tell you, in your sin, when you've come to the bottom and your life is a disaster, that's when you will really get to know, amen, your father God. That's when you really get to know him. Amen. What did he find here? He found a father that was looking for him. He had never quit looking for him. He had never given up on him. Had never lost hope. Amen. But a father that was still, amen, praying and looking for his son to come back home. And I want you to know that your heavenly father is still looking for you today. He's never gave up on you. He's never quit looking for you. And even this morning, amen, if you would discover, amen, that he is looking for you. He's looking for you. He never quit. I think the very next day after that son walked out, the father was there on the porch looking for him. I think every day after that, he was on the porch looking for his son. Amen. And we find that in the scripture, amen, he saw him afar off. He saw him long before he even got, he was looking for him. And God is looking for you today. Your heavenly father is looking for you. He's looking for you and that's why. Man, you're here this morning because he's looking for you. I'll tell you what he discovered about his father. Not only that his father was looking for him, but he discovered his father loved him. Yeah, he loved me. It's funny how you, how, what when we once thought was being cruel and mean to us, we now find it to be his love. Right? What we thought once was just because he didn't like us, just because he thought he was going to be the big boss. Yeah. Right? Now we find out they made those decisions and he did that because he loves us. Right. Wow. Yeah. Right. He wouldn't let us do those things because he was mean. No, now we realize he didn't let us do that because he loved us. Right? right? Okay. Now we realize the love of a father. That's what he discovered. He went back home thinking that his father would just maybe accept him as a hired servant. But he did not even realize how much his father loved him at that point. His father wasn't going to take him back as a hired servant. But he brought him right back in as his son. Amen. He loved him. He restored him back to his position as son. Put a robe on him. Put the ring on his finger. Shoes on his feet. Amen. That's the love of a father. And let me tell you, you will find and you will discover today that your heavenly father, he loves you. In spite of all that you've done, in spite of all the bad things that's taken place in your life. You're going to find that he's a father that loves you. He's a father that loves you. Oh, what a great discovery. Do you remember the day that you discovered how much God loves you? Do you remember the day when it suddenly you came to the realization, what an awesome discovery, that God, he really loves me. That he would love me so much that he would forgive me of all of my transgression and all my sin. That's the Father. Man, you need to discover the Father. Man, notice, there's one other discovery he found. He had a discovery of his future. When he was in the pig pen, he thought, you know what? I don't have a future. He came, he said, maybe if I go to my Father, I'll become a hired servant. Maybe I'll just live out my days as a hired servant. But when I want you to know, when he got to the home, he found out that he actually had a future as a son. He had something to live for. When he thought it was all thrown away, when he thought it was all wasted, yet the father still had a future for him. And I want you to know, God has a future for you. It may look gloom right now. Your life may look, you may be full of doom and gloom. It may not look very hopeful. It may not look very positive. 
The outlook on your life may be gloomy, but can I tell you, amen, the Heavenly Father has a future for you. He's going to welcome you back into the home. Amen. And He is going to give you a future. Amen. God's got a plan for you. Amen. And I know maybe you've went out and you've wasted a lot of years and a lot of time in sin, but God still has a future for you. A future. And you say, Brother David, there's been those that have, those that have went out and lived all their life in sin only came back to the Heavenly Father on their deathbed. You saying that God has a future for them? Yes, because it's an eternal future. Amen. It's for all of eternity. Amen. That we will live with the Lord. It's not just this life, but it's after death. Amen. When we live forever with the Lord. Amen. There's a future that God has for us. Amen. You look at it as being gloomy. Amen. But God sees something very positive for you. In your future. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to get to the point. Where you get to the point where you know what? Realize your life's a disaster. Discover the folly of all of your sin. Discover that you know all this thing... These things that I thought was going to be great in my life right. turned out to be a disaster. It turned out to be a disaster. There's some discoveries that you need to make today. Do you really know the Heavenly Father loves you? He's here looking for you today. He came today looking for you. Amen. He came today looking for you. I felt like the Lord started looking for somebody at about 6 o'clock this morning. Yeah, what are you talking about? Well, I felt like at 6 o'clock this morning when I was sitting on the couch that God spoke to my heart that somebody needs to give their life to Jesus. You know what? He's looking. He was looking for you. I don't know. When did you decide to come to church today? God's looking for you. He knew you was coming. He's been looking for you. He's been looking for you. Hallelujah. Let's sing this together today.
were plenty, but you left the peace of hope for new places now to roam. Nothing's left you cold and longing, just a glimpse. Oh, back home. 